Today I review the scary movie equivalent of a lukewarm bowl of plain oatmeal. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the made in 2017, released in 2019 movie, The Curse of Buckout Road. Uh, this was a really interesting one for me. I was flabbergasted while watching it, not in any sense of how good the movie was, but in a totally different way that I'll get into in a little bit. But first, I kind of want to describe what this movie is about. There is apparently a road in the Hudson Valley area of New York that is the most cursed road in America, Buckout Road. Whereas every uh, town has their haunted whatevers and their urban legends, this road has at least three, all intertwined within it, and it's apparently this epicenter of supernatural activity. But regardless, this movie kicks off with a suicide, and the suicide is inherently suspicious. Uh, It comes out of nowhere. The character had been complaining about weirdness for the past week, uh, sleepwalking bouts that were totally uncharacteristic, etc., feelings of being followed, uh, and then takes her own life seemingly uh and the let's just call a main character of dr lawrence powell played by danny glover gets brought in to witness the interview tapes with the uh the victim and establish a mental state to try and determine what actually happened and in doing so kind of gets wrapped up in this investigation as he finds other people that are sleepwalking other people that might be at risk and then other suicides might happen and at some point during the movie, uh, about a third uh, or so away, uh, the way through, the baton gets passed from the Danny Glover character uh, to his grandson, Aaron Powell, uh, played by Evan Ross, uh, to continue the investigation. And uh, as he finds out more, he finds out more about these urban legends. He finds out more about the Curse of Buckout Road. And he finds out more about the uh, state of the present that allows these curses to continue existing. And I'm not really going to get into any more than that uh, for fear of spoilers. But the reason that I was flabbergasted while watching this movie is I had never seen... uh, Well, in, in my mind, I can't recall, at the very least, a movie that looked so good and had such interesting characters and such well-developed uh you know uh, mythos and all of that at the three-quarter mark by any metric that you can use to determine the success of a horror film this movie managed to get three quarters of the way there trip on its own shoelaces and fall flat on its face the characters ultimately having been as interestingly established proved totally uninteresting the plot having been an interesting mythos that kind of had an interesting way of going about developing itself, turned into a meandering mess. The scares that it attempted, it had a good lead in, but absolutely none of them worked. There was a moment early on in the movie that uh, I knew that I was in for something really kind of unique and special here, uh, where there was a scare that was produced and... (laughs) I thought it was hilarious. I was thinking, well, man, this movie's clever to set up a a joke like that. That, uh, you know, okay, uh, it's not even a spoiler, but a character. You know, I said the character that uh, the victim of the uh, that got the movie rolling here was exhibiting weird symptoms like sleepwalking. Well, at one point, uh, her husband wakes up in the middle of the night. She's not there. She, but the light is on in the bathroom, and he says, "Honey, come to bed." She comes into bed, and screams in his face like a lunatic and then fast asleep and he's just freaking out and i thought that that was hilarious like okay we're establishing some sleepwalking patterns here that is a funny scared thing that they were making a spoof of so that the real scare can come later uh you know perhaps at some point uh or maybe that that was just you know a quirk of the character that you know they play these pranks on each other and he was just kind of frazzled by it but i was waiting for the real scare to come maybe uh at some point in the you know remainder of the night him waking up and finding her over the bed and instead of the comical scream in front in his face uh maybe like a more of a demonic 
like this is what's really going on. This is not anything lighthearted anymore kind of scare. And it, it, I was waiting, I was waiting, I was waiting, and it wasn't coming. And then we, the movie just kept going. And then I thought to myself, oh, dear. Oh, that was meant to be really scary. Oh, dear. <laughs> this movie does not know how to produce those. And that continued on. Uh, not that all the attempts were funny. Most of them were just kind of duds. Uh, anytime it would try to produce a jump scare, I saw it coming a million miles away. It wasn't startling. It wasn't interesting. It wasn't scary. It wasn't thrilling. There was absolutely nothing about it. It was like watching the lighting of a firework, just the fuse go in and just... Pfft. So it was by any metric you can use for a horror film. Like I said, this got fairly far. It's like it relied on uh, established practice and uh, skills developed through the course of repetition but not with any sense of real talent to bring it actually out to fruition. It's like watching a college baseball player get picked up for a small town minor league, you know, team and then never progressing beyond that, you know, never getting up to the show. It's just kind of that's where he was. His skill level took him that far and no further and now he has to sell couches. That's what this movie was. Was <laughs> this was a college ball player that now sells couches. It really was a fascinating watch just in how adept the camera work was and the writing was and so forth to still always fail. So I'm going to go ahead and throw up all the scores here. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And you can see that across the board, it is a testament to mediocrity in, any, in every way except for the intent. And that's honestly because when you add all of those up, it basically made for a very bland watch. That's why I made that joke about the you know, lukewarm oatmeal in my opening stinger there. It was something that I just kind of sat through more than watched and enjoyed. So on that basis, I would not really recommend The Curse of Buckout Road. It is a very generic, very blah horror film. And I can see, honestly, without sounding too harsh here, and I'm sorry, but I can see why it sat on the shelf for two years before getting picked up by a distributor. I really think that this is one that I would say should be avoided even. It's really not that good, unless you want to use it as something of a conversation piece or to analyze in the way that I have described. Maybe it's something that you can kind of, well, I want to see what this level of three-quarter success looks like. Uh, okay, in that case, <laughs> have at it. But in the other, any other case, I really can't recommend it. So that should about do it. That's my review of 2017's The Curse of Buckout Road. I really thank you for joining me here today. If you like these reviews, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, my Patreon link is below. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.